Hey, what's up, Evil Biz out here, and today I want to bring you guys a review of a movie that is right at home inside File 13. It's tailor made for File 13. And that movie is The Howling 2 Your Sister is a Werewolf. Of course, The Howling 2 is a sequel to The Howling, which is just one of the best werewolf movies that we horror film buffs have. Um, there's not a lot of great werewolf movies. The Howling is definitely a great werewolf movie. Awesome special effects, the, the, the transformation effects from Rob Bottin, awesome. The script by John Sayles, awesome. Lots of great inside jokes and references to other horror movies and other horror movie directors. A uh, great direction from Joe Dante. Um, all those attributes that made the original Howling so good. The Howling 2 doesn't have. Not even close. Yet, The Howling 2, in its own way, in my opinion, is just as entertaining a movie to watch as The Howling. Now, a great way to kind of sum up, to illustrate uh, the, the Howling 2, and it happens right off the bat, it's the first thing you see, it's Christopher Lee's image somehow superimposed over this starry night sky background and he's reading out of this book some sort of drivel about uh, the mother of abominations blah 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 but it really has absolutely nothing to do with what transpires throughout the rest of the film and the image is just so odd of Christopher Lee standing there holding a book superimposed with this nighttime starry sky around him. But it's just one of the very confusing and odd and head scratching moments that you're going to have. You're going to have many, many, many more uh, throughout the duration of The Howling 2's running time. But what The Howling 2 has uh, that none of the other Howling films have is a continuity with the film that preceded it. Um, the movie picks up at the funeral of the, the character of Karen, who was D. Wallace's character in the original Howling, who, of course, transformed into a werewolf and was executed on camera in front of the nation. We're at her funeral. We're introduced to her brother. We're introduced to a, a reporter who's been uh, assigned to, to, to cover um, the funeral or whatever. I don't know. And, and we're introduced to Stefan, played by Christopher Lee. And what Christopher Lee is doing in this movie, I have absolutely no idea. Clearly, Christopher Lee has absolutely no idea what he's doing in this movie either. He looks completely and utterly confused throughout the whole movie. I don't know if they, like, drugged him or what, um, but he's totally stunned. He appears totally <laughs> disoriented and stunned throughout the entire movie that he's even in this movie. Anyway, he is an occult investigator, and he's there to tell everybody... Karen's a werewolf. I've got to save her immortal soul or she'll be you know, damned to walk the earth forever as this awful werewolf. Well, eventually, uh, Stefan and Karen's brother and this reporter lady, they team up and they decide to go to Transylvania, um, where, which is apparently now the werewolf hub. I don't know if the, if the werewolves of the world got together and they teamed up on vampires and kick them out of Transylvania um, because I thought that was sort of where the vampires live but anyway uh, and also they establish in the Howling 2 that werewolves can be killed by a stake through the heart and holy water which a little confusing even at one point somebody pulls out some garlic and a werewolf nearby is like Ugh. Um, so I, a little, little confusing what's going on there, but again, it fits in with, with the theme of the movie, with the movie, which is confusion. We play by our own rules. We're, yeah, uh, just leave it alone. Um, and there we're introduced to Sturba, played by Sybil Danning, and she is the werewolf queen, and she is sort of amassing her werewolf army. Um, I guess they all just come together every now and again at her castle in Transylvania. Werewolves the world over. They go there, they dress in ridiculous outfits, and they engage in a werewolf orgy. Yes, there's a werewolf orgy in the movie. 
And um, if that wasn't enough for you, there's also a werewolf threesome in this movie. Um, so you definitely you've got the sleaze quotient. <laughs> Movie's definitely sleazy. The movie tries very, very hard to be um, titillating and, and sensual, though it's so sort of awkward in its delivery because everybody's like covered in fur and they're growling at each other and scratching at each other. The, the, the threesome that happens uh, include in, involving Sybil Danning's character and two other characters. They're covered. They're not fully transformed into werewolves, but they're covered in fur. They've got the teeth in. They've got claws. They're growling. They're like purring. They're scratching each other. It's very, very awkward and not even the least bit in any way sensual or sexy. Um, there's one part in the film where. Um, Ben is his name, Karen's brother, and this reporter lady, they're up in this room, and they're knocking boots. And down in the street below, a, a werewolf can actually smell them having sex. And he goes, oh, just kind of howls to himself for whatever reason, I guess, you know, like, Go get her, buddy. Um, again, totally crazy out there. You know, um, the movie follows a dreamlike logic. There's no logic in this film whatsoever. It takes place in a totally alternate universe. And even though it's the only Howling film that, has, that follows the previous Howling movie, the Howling and the Howling 2 are so different. They literally take place in two completely opposite worlds, two completely opposite realities. Some of the stuff that happens in The Howling 2 is so just silly and confusing and head-scratching, yet at the same time it's so, so utterly entertaining. <laughs> um, the werewolf transformations and stuff, that they, they don't really do transformations in the film, they just kind of... You know, uh, they'll show, like, close-ups of, like, nails coming out of, like, a glove, clearly. Or, you know, um, th th clearly they, they didn't have Rob Bottin on the set of The Howling 2. They didn't have a big budget for, uh, for any kind of special makeup effects. I think the whole budget pretty much went into Christopher Lee's pocket. Um, so they, and, and they do a smart thing. They keep the werewolves kind of in the shadows because the werewolves really are just guys running around in, like, a gorilla suit. I mean, literally, they look like... A gorilla or like a yeti running around very clumsily in the woods. These are really the, the the least menacing werewolves in horror movie history. They're not scary in the least. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll give them that. They kind of kept the werewolves in the shadows for for good good reason. Um, the movie was directed by Philip Mora who actually went on and directed the next Howling film, which was The Marsupials, the Australian um, werewolf movie, which I actually liked quite a bit. He also directed uh, Communion, uh, the alien invasion movie with Christopher Walken, which is, which is pretty good, too. So he's done some good stuff. And, and what's funny about The Howling 2, two things have always stuck out in my head about The Howling 2. One is just the weird, you know, it was like 1984-1985, so of course MTV was huge. It was influencing how movies, you know, the music video style was influencing how movies were being made. So there's a lot of super quick cuts, weird angles, um, a lot of you know, attempted stylistic stuff. You've got some, some edit, intercutting of like, um, uh, yes, imagery that's supposed to be, I don't know, uh, deeper, um, I, I, have, I have no idea what was going on there, um, but that sort of look of the film, uh, and also there's a band called Babel that plays during the film. They play this song called The Howling, and um, you're going to be singing this song for at least a couple of days after you watch the movie. Um, it's a really cool song, actually. It's kind of, it's, all, it's, it's new wavy, kind of also kind of punky, um, but goth. It, it's weird. I mean, there's a guy playing a guitar, um, but yeah, just a, a really cool song. I've always liked the song. Um, but um, uh, so, what, 
if you watch this film and you make it to the end, which you should, there's the most ridiculous end credit sequence. They're playing, the, 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 the Babel band is playing. They play live in the movie. But the song plays constantly throughout the, the entirety of the film. But at the end of it, they're, they're playing the song. And there's a sequence in the film where Sybil Danning rips off her dress and exposes her breasts. They repeat this ripping off of the dress over and over and over and over again for really absolutely no reason but to just like show boobs over and over and over and over and over again and at the very end of the movie while the credits are running I mean there's no reason for this to happen um, aside from just being totally sleazy and <laughs> um, yeah but um, yeah the howling too your sister's a werewolf what I'm trying to get at here, here is, it's a weird, weird, strange, silly, ridiculous, sleazy, uh, exploitive, um, fun, entertaining movie. Um, it's like an hour and a half long, lots of fun. There's a couple of good gags in the film, one involving a, uh, a dwarf, a little person who's eyes explode and not just explode but like projectile explode out of his head uh there's a, a good seek a good gag involving a, a priest who is just um uh horribly <laughs> um violated by a uh, this bat-like creature that's actually uh pretty cool so you, you do have a few good special effects in the film um but yeah just overall such a fun movie, such a fun, silly, wacky, off-the-wall movie that just plays by its own rules, uh, is totally out of left field, um, just has, o obeys no logic but its own, and uh, I I'll give it credit for that. It's unabashedly um, all of those things. And uh, I appreciate it for that. And it's, it, it's highly entertaining. Uh, if you haven't seen The Howling 2, please, please do so. You can pick it up on DVD, super cheap. Go watch it. Wild movie. If you've seen The Howling 2, please let me know what you think of it in the uh, comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. And uh, until next time, take it easy.